Hey, how's it going, everybody? Welcome to Whistle Kick Martial Arts Radio, episode 229. Today, we're going to talk about why people struggle with continuing in activities that don't have endpoints, which relates to the massive dropout in the martial arts when people receive their black belt. If you're new to the show, my name is Jeremy Lesniak. I'm your host here for the show. I'm the founder of Whistle Kick Sparring Gear and Apparel, and you can check out everything we do at whistlekick.com. I want to thank you for tuning in today. Thank you for sharing some of your time with my voice, and I hope you're having a great day. If you haven't checked out what we do online, I would encourage you to do so. In fact, we are constantly stepping up everything we do. And over the last couple months, we have brought on additional help with our social media. Some of you that follow us may have seen that the caliber of what we're putting out there is even better than it was. I'm, I'm proud of what we were doing, but to be honest, I was doing almost all of it. And I don't have a ton of time. Nor am I necessarily the most creative person. So we took a look. We found somebody. And she's doing a fantastic job. So check us out on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Those are our three main places. And we're at Whistlekick at all of those spots. If you want a little bit more kind of behind the scenes stuff, you can check out the Facebook group for this show, Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio Behind the Scenes. It's a private group, but we'll let you in. Just request it. Do a search on Facebook. You'll find it. It'll come right up. I was having a conversation with someone the other day, and we were just kind of kicking back and forth on nutrition. And don't worry, this is going to tie in. We were talking about why it's so challenging for so many people to stick with a a nutrition program. I don't want to call it a diet because a diet implies that it's temporary and restrictive, but why people have such a hard time eating the way they know they should indefinitely. And why so many of the same people are able to get really, really strict for a limited period of time. You know, these these 30-day health challenges, all these things that pop up. You've probably seen them on social media. If you go to a gym, maybe you, you see them there. They're popular and they're effective, but they don't last. There are all these studies showing that people that compete in quote-unquote healthy sports like bodybuilding show how unhealthy they become when they no longer have the carrot of competition. And I think you can draw a similar corollary to martial arts, to martial arts training. A lot of people do really well training for a competition or earning their first degree black belt, and then they drop out. Why? It's because as human beings, we seem to struggle with doing things that don't have defined endpoints. It seems like we have a harder and harder time as our lives get busier, as the world gives us more distractions, more things to consume our time, more places that we can invest in ourselves or in other people. It's a chaotic world. There's a lot going on. It can be easy to buckle down to say, when I do this, my life will be better. When I've accomplished this, when I've reached that that goal of how my body looks or I've established some competence in that new technique, or I put that black belt around my waist. But that's not really how life is, is it? And I think inherently we all know that as martial artists, maybe we get it even a little bit better, but we're just as guilty of it. You've probably heard people talk about certain goals in this way. You know, I've got to buckle down. I've got to get this done. I've got to earn my degree in this. I've got to get this promotion at work. And the reality is, if you really want to dig into it, these people are chasing happiness. We're trying to say that once this thing happens, once this change occurs in life, I'm going to be happier. The reality, all of the studies, all of the philosophical writings on this, heck, if if you're really honest with yourself, your own experience, that's not how it works. Happiness rarely occurs from achieving something. The happiness really seems to come from the belief that that will change. And sure, there's happiness in the moment and for some period of time after. But as human beings, we get used to where we're at. It's a great thing that we're always looking for more. We're trying to improve and get better. Those are wonderful things. But the association of happiness 
with those goals. That's not the reality. Unfortunately, as martial artists, as a community for decades, we've put out there that black belt is this pinnacle. Of course, we all know there's more after that. There's continued knowledge and additional ranks and maybe even training at another school and another style. You all know my feelings on that. We need to change the messaging. We need to stop telling the world that black belt is this endpoint. We need to stop telling our students that black belt is this magical door. There's a lot of mystery. There's a lot of secret kind of vibe that comes with having a black belt. In some schools, in my original school, the black belt test was not only not discussed, but no one was allowed to watch it. It was the people conducting the test and the testing candidates, which were almost always individual. In fact, in the, in the let's see, 12, 16, 14 years that I trained at that school, there was only one test that had multiple people. It was just two. Over the last few episodes, you've heard me talk about a lot of the way we essentially market martial arts to the world, to our own students, to ourselves. I think we're deluding ourselves. This idea that black belt is this be-all, end-all clearly is not the case. But it's hard to know that unless you're on the other side of it. When you're a white belt, when you're a yellow belt, and you look at the black belts in the front of the room, or at least in front of you, they seem to know so much. They're so much better at everything that happens than you. So you look at them and you say, okay, black belt, that's it. That's the, that's the definition of success within the martial arts. In most schools, black belt is the last color. Sometimes there are stripes. Sometimes black is met with other colors on the belt but it's still a black belt. It's a black belt with other colors. I'm not going to say I have the answer, but I feel this is the reason. If we identify the reason, maybe we can change it together. My first suggestion, and this comes from other conversations with other folks, is trying to detach the praise, the validation of success within martial arts training, even at younger ages and younger ranks, from rank. To reframe the way that we look at teaching others and identify and reward individual successes, even on a smaller basis, to recognize effort in ways other than stripes or new colors. To recognize that the process itself, this personal development thing that we call martial arts, to recognize that it in and of itself is worthy of our time, of our effort, sweat, blood, tears, aches, pains, bruises, broken bones. That's the message we need to tell to our students. That's the message we need to share with the rest of the world. Martial arts in and of itself, regardless of rank, is worthwhile. Of course, we need to believe that ourselves. I think most of us do. I'm going to guess most of you listening to this show do because this is the kind of vibe that we put out in this show. If it didn't resonate with you, you probably would have stopped listening already. I'm not saying that what I'm suggesting is easy or that it's going to happen overnight or honestly, even over the course of a few years. This is an entrenched belief that we've put out to the wider world and it's going to take a lot of time. To change. It starts on an individual basis. Make sure that you are training for the right reasons. And if you're struggling to find those reasons, take a step back. Take a look at yourself. Take a look at your training. Talk to others. Email me. Jeremy at whistlekick.com. I'm still able to respond to every email I get. Just that's an that's an aside. We're 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 getting to the edge, but I can still do it. If you're an instructor, make sure that the way you're conducting your classes, the way that you are educating your students, that you're building value in the process, not just value in rank, not just value in the awards that come from competition. If enough of us do that, things will shift. 
I hope I got your wheels turning. Hopefully you're, you're thinking about this, you're considering some of the things that I'm saying, and hopefully you have stuff to add to it. Feel free to reach out. You can email me. You can reach out to us on social media. It'll get to me, at Whistlekick. You can comment at the show notes, whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. This is episode 229. You can jump in on the Facebook group. I guess that's social media. At the end of the day, I really hope that you'll consider what I'm saying here. Otherwise, we will continue to have all of these people strive for black belt and then drop out and say, I used to do martial arts. I got my black belt. Why did you stop? Oh, I don't know. I don't think a lot of them fully get it. With that, I shall leave you to ponder. Hope to see you here next time on Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. Until then, until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day.